Hi everyone and welcome to the Deployment Research YouTube channel. My name is Johan and in this demo I will show you some of the highlights from the Config Manager 2403 release that was uh, released just last week. And that means of course demo time. First of all, the Config Manager 2403 release is still in an early ring. That means that you need to opt in to be able to get access to it. At this point, I do not recommend going production, but you can definitely upgrade your lab environments for this. And if you don't have a lab environment, now is an excellent opportunity to get one. In order to opt in anyway, you need to download that PowerShell script. And I will go over to one of my lab machines over here. Open up a PowerShell prompt, navigate to that folder where I downloaded the script, and then you simply run that script, this one here, and you specify your site server, and that's it. After you do that, the update will show up where you usually have your config manager updates, and as you can see, I have already installed this in my lab environment here. Now, the 2403 release is a baseline release, meaning that you can install a server fresh from this version. However, the early ring version is not yet available as a separate download. It usually takes Microsoft a month or two to make it uh, fully stable before they release a downloadable version of 2403. So for now, you will have to install an older version, 2303, and then go ahead and do the upgrade from that one. Before diving into the added features, let me show you some of the things that are removed from this release. I will head over to the website. And for example, if you search for um, 2012 R2, you will learn that that server operating system is no longer supported by the platform. You won't be able to upgrade if you have this. Now, you should not be having this anyway. 2012 R2 was deprecated or end of support last year in October. So you should no longer have any servers, definitely no config manager servers running this version. Other things that was changed is that there is no longer any HTTP only support uh, in the platform. And Microsoft also removed the support for the good old System Center Update Publisher that was um, went out of support just a few months ago here. Now, one of the shiny features, however, that was added is the global search that I like a lot. So if I get over to my lab environment again and go up here in search and, for example, type in 23H2 and wait patiently you will now see I get a collection back of all objects, no matter where they are, that is having 23H2 in their name. So for example, I can go ahead and check out um, some of my uh, task sequences and I can do an edit or view directly from here. So beautiful addition, allowing you to search effectively across all different nodes in the Config Manager console. Other changes that was made was that we finally got folders for scripts so that you can easily organize your scripts in categories that make sense to you. For example, here I have a category with my a few of my client help scripts. Now, other changes that was made was that the retry installation options that you had for software updates and application model apps is now also available for install packages, or legacy packages in the task sequence. So if I would head over to a config manager 2309 environment, so the previous version, and I will go and pick one of my sequences. Uh, let's see what I have here. I can pick this one. And you will see that if I go to the uh, steps for installing a package and go to options, there are no retry options here. But if I go to 2403 and pick one of my sequences, like this one, edit, head down to my application. I have a disabled application step right here, but you can see that in the options, you now have this action here. Now, this 
option together with the same options for dynamic variables is mentioned on the, on the documentation page for 2403. But if you start to read that documentation, this is one of the sentences that you have to read like 10 times and then it still doesn't make sense. Now, the general consensus in the community seems to be that this feature allow packages from not reporting an error even if the content has been updated since you initiated the deployment. So rather than getting like a hash value is not correct, any type of those error messages, that won't happen anymore in this release. And if that is tied to the retry option or just how the change in the backend, I don't know yet, but this was some of the things that were mentioned here on the documentation page. Another change that was done in 2403 is that you now have a health dashboard for software updates. So if I go to monitoring and head down to troubleshooting dashboard, so this node is new and this one is new. So I can pick one of my update groups. And for example, I can pick the one uh, over here, my 24, this one, the latest software update group that I have. And it will tell me that I have one success, two failures, and one unknown at the moment, because in this particular deployment or collection affected, I have four different clients. Now, some of these error messages doesn't yet make sense to me. For example, this one here, I don't think even exists. Uh, that particular error code is usually timeout code. So I, I'm not sure why branch cache is in here, but we'll see what happens along the line here now when the the first early ring has been out for a bit. Now, a fun fact that I noticed is that if you pick a software update group where you only have one client, like this one here that I have from January, you will find that even though I only have one client, I have 100% success and 100% failure at the same time, which is impressive, but um, hopefully that issue will be fixed as well. Um, and then, of course, um, there are some updates to the PowerShell modules in 2403. If I head over to my 2309 server and I ask PowerShell about PowerShell, but I can ask, okay, how many uh, commands are available? You see that it's 1176 in 2309. And if I go over to 2403, run the same thing you will see that i have the exact same number here but this is not entirely true because the parameters have changed so if i ask for more details in 2309 for example show me how many actual commands you have it will tell me 27,585. And if I go to 2403 and ask for the same thing, it will show me 27589, so four more. And it turns out that after doing a little bit of a comparison, uh, there were four that was new. This one is documented that they added new, it's in the documentation page. But these guys here, this one, this one, and this one are not yet documented, but they are new in 2403. And finally, of course, we have ARM64 deployments in Config Man 2403. So in my environment here, I have created a uh, few sequences that I'm doing for ARM64 deployment. Uh, I only have two ARM64 devices right now. It's the dev kit from Microsoft from last year, which is a Surface device, ARM64 platform. And I have a Lenovo X13S. It is also an ARM64 device that I've been trying to do some test deployments with ARM64. I also have added in the boot images for this. Worth mentioning is that you absolutely must be on this version here of the ADK or later because this is the only version of ADK, or this is the first version of the ADK. If I go to properties here and optional components, that has the X64 emulator for WinPE in it. Early versions of ARM for WinPE 
could not run 64-bit commands. So this was a, I guess, an easy way out for the config manager team to not having to recompile their sequences for ARM. So instead, they were actually running the 64-bit sequences on an ARM64 WinPE. Now, if I have over to one of my ARM devices, this one here um, is indeed an ARM device. This is the Snapdragon uh, platform or CPU, but that allows me to run Hyper-V on with ARM clients. So if I reset this device, I can go ahead and do a Pixabit. One of my ARM 64-bit boot images is coming down. Tap in the password. And here I have my two different task sequences for ARM 64. And I can go ahead and pick one of these sequences, hit next, and it will happily install Windows 11 for ARM 64 on this one. Now, if I jump over to one of the devices I deployed earlier, this one here, and log in, you can see that this is indeed a virtual machine running on this ARM platform. If I open up a command prompt, and do a set command, it will tell me that the processor architecture is indeed ARM64. This will show up differently in WinP at the moment. I expect that will be changed, but this is what it looks like in Windows. But even this one here, uh, the ARMv8 identifier for the CPU, that one also show up in the WinP build image. So all in all, a pretty cool feature, finally being able to deploy ARM64 devices. And rumors are that we will see a lot of different ARM64 devices coming up this year from all the different vendors. So looking very much forward to that. And that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again in another video. Bye for now.